contestants, as always, the contest comes to you in five rounds. The first round is a round for fundamental concepts. The questions are simple and direct. I'm expecting simple and direct answers from you. If you answer your major question correctly, three points. If the question is incorrectly answered, it becomes available to the two remaining schools. A school may ring and attempt an answer. If right, one bonus point. If not, there is a penalty. One point. For questions which require calculations, you have 30 seconds to present your answer. If there are no calculations, you have 10 seconds to do so. Ladies and gentlemen, you are to attempt each question once only. Best wishes to all three schools. All right. For this first set, it's a single question to all three schools. When I get to your school, you give me a right answer. I move on for the next right answer to the same question. This time, no bonus. All right. So, and you can do this in 10 seconds. All right? I will be starting with you, Bishop Herman, after I read the question. All right. Catalytic converters catalyze redox reactions that convert gaseous pollutants in exhaust gas into less toxic forms, thereby reducing air pollution. When I get to your school, please name one, only one metal that is commonly employed as a catalyst in an automotive catalytic converter. First choice, Bishop Herman. Nickel. 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 That's incorrect, so I'm moving on. Impriaso. Go ahead, Clavet. Platinum. Platinum. You are right. Wesley girls? Yes. Palladium. Palladium. You are right. The other one is rhodium. Rhodium. Next. It's another question that goes around for answers. And so I'm going to start by reading the question, then I come to you for the right answer after which I move on to the next school for the next right answer. So the question is, mention any one of the growth phases of the bacterial growth curve. First choice, Bishop Herman. Wisdom? The, the sporocyte growth phase. That's incorrect. I'm not gonna, I'm not and so in prior so in prior so yes, Clavet. We have the replication growth phase. No. Wesley Girls. Prisca. The lag phase. Yes. So there are several of them. In fact, there are four phases. You have the phase of decline, also known as the death phase. You have the log or exponential phase. Then, of course, the lag phase that we got from Wesley Girls, and then there's a stationary phase. Next set, you need 30 seconds, and there's a preamble to all schools. Preamble. Find the equation of the curve with giving gradient dy dx, where k is a constant to be determined. Did you get your preamble? One more time. Find the equation of the curve with given gradient dy dx, where k is a constant to be determined. So, Bishop Herman, for you, dy dx is equal to 3x squared plus 2kx, and passing through the points p with coordinates 1, 5, and q with coordinates 2, 6.
Yes, wisdom. Y is equal to x x to the power three plus minus x to the power two plus four. That's incorrect for bonus. Wesley Girls. Preska. Y is equal to x cubed minus 6x squared minus 2. That's incorrect. I'll hold on to the answer for a bit. All right, with the same preamble in Priceful. dy dx is equal to 3kx squared plus 4x and passing through the points P with coordinates 1, 3 and Q with coordinates negative 1, negative 5. Clavet. Um, you have the equation. Y is equal to okay. two x cube plus two x squared minus one. That's incorrect for a bonus. All right, I'm holding on to your answer as well. With the same preamble, Wesley girls, for you, dy dx is equal to 6x squared plus k. And passing through the point P with coordinates negative 1, 8, and Q with coordinates 1, negative 4. Yes, na, Nana. Y is equal to 2x cubed. Y is equal to 2x cubed minus 8x plus 2. You are right. <laughs> Bishop Herman, your, your equation was y is equal to x cubed minus 2x squared plus 6. And in prior, so your equation is y is equal to 4x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3. All right, next set, 30 seconds with a preamble to all schools. Preamble. A vehicle mounted early warning system broadcasts a 625 hertz tone from a loudspeaker array when the speed of sound in still air is 345 meters per second. Please, did you get your preamble? No. Okay. A vehicle mounted early warning system broadcasts a 625 hertz tone from a loudspeaker array when the speed of sound in still air is 345 meters per second. Now, Bishop Herman, what is the frequency perceived by a stationary observer when the vehicle is approaching at 5.00 meters per second?
Yes, wisdom. We have th three hundred and and twelve heads. That's incorrect for bonus. <laughs> All right, I'm saving it. In prayer, so with the same preamble. What is the frequency perceived by a stationary observer when the vehicle is receding at 15.0 meters per second? Is that hand up, Clavet? Go ahead. Madam, the frequency perceived is equal to 687 hertz. That's incorrect for bonus. <laughs> Wesley Girls, with the same preamble. What is the speed of the vehicle when a stationary observer perceives a frequency of 675 hertz? Is your hand up, Nana? Yes, please. The speed is 300, 356 meters per second. That's incorrect for bonus. <laughs> ah, this was a difficult one for all schools. Bishop Herman, your answer was 634 heads. In prior, so yours was 599 heads. And Wesley Girls, yours was 25.6 meters per second. I know by next year you would have figured out how to do this. Next set, 30 seconds, with a preamble to all schools. Preamble. Give the systematic name of the major product formed in the given reaction. In other words, I'm going to give you a reaction. Kindly give the systematic name of the major product formed in the reaction. All right, Bishop Herman. The reaction of 3-methylcyclopentene with hydrogen gas. Wisdom. 3 methyl cyclopentene. That's incorrect. Yeah. For a bonus. Yes, uh, Wesley Girls, which of you? Preska. Methyl cyclopentene. Yes. <laughs> By the way, if you don't raise your hand, I am at liberty to call either one of you. Okay, with the same preamble in prior so the reaction of 2-ethyl-1-butene with hydrogen chloride. Yes, go ahead, Collins. You have three clue, three metal painting. Yes. <laughs> Wesley Girls with the same preamble. The reaction of one for dimethyl cyclohexene 
with hydrogen bromide. Nana. One bromo, one four dimethyl cyclohexene. Yes. For the next set, you only need 10 seconds, and I have another preamble to all schools. Preamble. Indicate the part of the stomach of humans to which the following description refers. So I'm going to give you a description. Indicate the part of the stomach of humans to which the description I give you refers. All right, Bishop Herman. It is a section of the stomach that connects to the esophagus. This is where food enters the stomach. Wisdom. The cardiac section. The cardiac section. The cardiac section. Cardiac. Cardiac. That's incorrect. Yes, go ahead. The cardiac section. Cardia. Cardia. With the same preamble in prior so it is a dome-shaped section at the top of the stomach. It does not usually store food unless the stomach is full. It stores any gas that is a byproduct of digestion. Yes, Clavet. Um, the fundus. Yes. Wesley girls with the same preamble. It is the funnel shaped section of the stomach that controls the rate at which food empties from the stomach into the small intestine. Nana. The pyloric sphincter. No. Yes. Station. Yes. It's not the sphincter. Mm. All right. Next set, 30 seconds with a preamble to all schools. Preamble. Find the value of N, given that... You, I hope you got your preamble. It was very short. All right. So, Bishop Herman, 1, 2, 3 to the base N is equal to 3, 8 to the base 10. Wisdom? N is five. You are right. <laughs> In prior school, with the same preamble, one, three, two to the base N is equal to five, six to the base 10. Yes, love it. N is six. You're right. <laughs> With the same preamble, one, one, five to the base N is equal to seven, seven to the base 10. Nana. N is equal to eight. Yes. Well done on that one. Next set, 30 seconds with a preamble to all schools. Preamble. Please listen carefully. A liquid of mass 
0.16 kg, initial temperature 25 degrees Celsius, and specific heat capacity 4.2 kJ per kilogram Kelvin is contained in a well-insulated vessel of negligible heat capacity. Find the equilibrium temperature of the vessel and its contents following the given event. Please, did you get your preamble? No? All right, once again. A liquid of mass 0.16 kg, initial temperature 25 degrees Celsius, and a specific heat capacity 4.2 kJ per kilogram Kelvin is contained in a well-insulated vessel of negligible heat capacity. Find the equilibrium temperature of the vessel and its contents following the given event. Now, Bishop Herman. An object of heat capacity 75 Joule per Kelvin and temperature 480 degrees Celsius is dropped into the liquid. Wisdom. Yeah. The final temperature to be for 46 point 46 degrees Celsius. That's incorrect for bonus. Yeah, you get All right. I will hold on to it. And price all. With the same preamble, an object of heat capacity 250 Joule per Kelvin and temperature 80 degrees Celsius is dropped into the liquid. Yes, Clavet. But um, the final temperature is given by the final temperature is equal to two hundred and fifty. 200 and 225 Kelvin. That's incorrect for a bonus. All right, I'm holding on to the answer. I'm moving on, Wesley Girls. With the same preamble, an object of heat capacity 618 Joule per Kelvin and temperature 10 degrees Celsius is dropped into the liquid. Nana. The final temperature is equal to 40 42 degrees Celsius. That's incorrect for bonus. Ah, another thing for you to work on for next year, right? Bishop Herman, yours was 71 degrees Celsius. In prior so yours was 40 degrees Celsius. That was a very slow, drawn out 200 and something Celsius from you. Uh, 40 degrees. I'm patient in my old age. Uh huh. And uh, Wesley Girls, 18 degrees Celsius. 
next set 30 seconds with a short preamble. Preamble to all schools. Assuming that the given compound exists, calculate the molar mass of element X if... That's a preamble. Did you hear it? Good. So, Bishop Herman, the mass of 0 0.150 moles of H2X2O8 is 26.4 grams. Four grams per mole. That's incorrect for bonus. Oh, Allow them. Okay, go ahead. 55.0 gram per mole. Pardon? 55. That's incorrect. Hmm. With the same preamble in Priceo, the mass of 0 0.0250 moles of calcium, and now I have in brackets X2O5. The bracket has a subscript 2, is 8.20 grams. Yes, Colin. Go ahead. Um, the molar mass of X is 104 gram per mole. That's incorrect for bonus. Yes. 32.0 gram per mole. Again. 32.0 gram That's per mole. That's right. <laughs> Wesley girls with the same preamble, the mass of 0 0.0150 moles of NaH, and now I have a bracket, X2O7 in the bracket, and the subscript of 3 for the bracket is 7.11 grams. Yes, Nana. The mass, the molar mass, sorry, of X is equal to. Is. One. 9 gram per mole. That is 19 gram per mole. I'm not accepting it for bonus. Yes. 19.0 gram per mole. 19.0 gram per mole. <laughs> Next set, 10 seconds. Bishop Herman, which bones form the wishbone or fecula of birds? Wisdom. The shoulder bone and then the chest bone. Incorrect. For a bonus. Is that Clavicle. 
Impriso, what name is given to the sound box of birds? Yes, Clave. Madam, it is the the pharynx. No. For a bonus. It's called the syrinx. Syrinx. Mm. Very beautiful word. S-Y-R-I-N-X. Syrinx. So now, if you didn't learn anything at all today, this is your word. Vocab. All right. Syrinx. Okay. Wesley Girls, where exactly is the syrinx of birds situated? Yes, Priska. So it is located at it's located at the beginning of the pharynx. I'm not accepting that for bonus. Okay. So more things to learn about the syrinx. So if you want to find the syrinx, you have to go to the point where the windpipe divides into two. This is at the base of the trachea, right? Uh -huh. So that's where to find the syrinx. So now vocab plus location, you are all set to go, people. Next set, 30 seconds with a preamble to all schools. Preamble. Solve the absolute value inequality. That's a preamble. Bishop Herman, your inequality. One less than the absolute value of the expression x minus 3, less than 7. Yes, Maudufia. We have it to be four less than x less than ten, or x is less than negative four, or x is greater than two. That's incorrect. I'm not accepting a for bonus. Hmm. All right, I'll hold on to the answer. With the same, with the same preamble, and give me your answer carefully, please. Five less than the absolute value of the expression x minus four less than 10. Yes, Clavet. Um, we have the expression 9 less than x less than 14, or negative 1 less than x less than negative 6. Hmm. I'm not accepting your side, I'll come back. Wesley girls with the same preamble. Seven less than the absolute value of the expression x plus two less than fifteen. Yes, Nana. 
So 5 less than x less than 13 or negative 17 less than x less than negative 9. Okay, I'm giving you 2 out of 3. Okay, so I wanted very nice formal answers. Mm. So for you, Bishop Herman, is the set of values of X such that, did any of you tell me this? Is the set of values of X such that 4 less than X less than 10 or negative 4 less than X less than 2? All right. For prior so your answer was the set of all values of x such that negative 6 less than x less than negative 1 or 9 less than x less than 14. All right. And Wesley girls, can you tell me the right answer? The set of all values of x such that 5 less than x less than 13 or negative 17 less than x less than negative 9. That is it. Thank you very much. <laughs> all right, last set of questions for the round. 30 seconds with a preamble to all schools. Preamble. Find the power factor of a series AC circuit with the given values of resistance R and reactance X. You may leave your answer as a fraction. Did you get your preamble, please? Great. Bishop Herman, R is equal to 50 ohms and X is equal to 120 ohms. iPhone 12. That's incorrect. Yes, and prize for Clavet. Five on 13. Yes. <laughs> now, your major question with the same preamble. R is equal to 60 ohm, and X is equal to 80 ohms. Clavet? 3 over 5. Yes. <laughs> Wesley Girls, last question with the same preamble. R is equal to 100 ohms and X is equal to 75 ohms. Prisca. Four and five. Again. Four and five. Yes. And with that, we've come to the end of the first round. Impriasu Senior High School has 18 points. <laughs> Wesley Girls High School has 20 points. <laughs> well done contestants, but there's still a long way to go. Four more rounds. But before we begin the second round, Wesley Girls High School would like to effect a substitution. Prisca, it's been a pleasure having you. Best wishes. And we have Zakia coming on for Prisca. You're welcome, Zakia. Welcome.
round two. This round is the Pepsodent Speed Race. The questions in the round are presented to all three schools at the same time. For an opportunity to answer a question, you must ring for it. May I hear your bell, Wesley Girls? Thank you. Yours, and Priyasol. Thank you. And yours, Bishop Herman. Thank you. If you ring and answer correctly on the first attempt, three points. If it's a second attempt, two points. If it's a third attempt, one point. But you must be careful, because if you attempt to answer a question and you are unsuccessful, unsuccessful means you provide a wrong answer, or you are not able to provide an answer within three seconds, you lose a precious point. Hmm? In order to alert you that your three seconds are up, we have a bell. May I hear the bell for the three seconds? Thank you. Once you hear that, it means you have lost the one point. Don't bother continuing. We give a chance to the other schools to continue. All right. If the question involves calculations, you have a maximum of 30 seconds to answer. If there are no calculations, you have a maximum of 10 seconds. Best wishes, everyone. First set of questions will require 10 seconds of your time for each. First question. The gastric glands are situated in which layer of the stomach? All right is the innermost or mucosa layer. Next one. Long hollow bones and connected air sacs are the characteristic features of which class of organisms? Class RV. Yes. Next one. Where can one locate the hormone response element in 11 cell? Okay, if you go searching for the hormone response element, you must look for the DNA. All right. Next set, 30 seconds each. First one. A solution was formed by dissolving 0.915 gram of potassium perbromate in enough water to obtain a total volume of 200 0.0 0.0 centimeter cubed. What is the molarity of this solution? Atomic mass for bromine is 80.0 gram per mole. Yes, which of you? Nana? 0.02 Five zero more per DMQ. You are right. <laughs> Next one. Give the sum of the whole number coefficients of reactants and products in the balanced equation of the reaction that occurs during the displacement reaction of lead with phosphoric acid. Yes, which of you, Nana? Nine. Yes. Next one. The reaction between a nuclide and curium 246, atomic number 96, 
produces nobelium 254, atomic number 102, and five neutrons. Identify the nuclei. Yes, Nana. Car carbon. Carbon 14. That's incorrect. Who rang next? <laughs> yes, go ahead. Thank you. Carbon 13. Carbon 13. Yes. <laughs> next one, 30 seconds. Find the angular speed of a sphere 20 seconds after it starts spinning about a diameter under the action of a steady 2 times 10 raised to the power negative 2 newton meter torque if its moment of inertia is 5 times 10 raised to the power negative 5 kilogram meter squared about a diameter. In prior so clavet, go. 400 rad per second. That's incorrect. Yes, Nana. Mm. Eight times ten exponents, three rad per second. You are right. <laughs> Next one, 30 seconds. Find the electric field at the origin due to a 10 nanocoulomb point charge at 3.0 I meter and a negative 10 nanocoulomb point charge at 3.0 J meter. Nana. Zero volts per meter. That's incorrect. Hmm, right answer is negative 10i plus 10j volts per meter. Next one, 10 seconds. Name the background radiation that accompanies characteristic X-rays generated by bombarding a target with accelerated electrons. Yes, Nana. Go. Brem Shalong. Yes. <laughs> Last set of questions for the round, 30 seconds each. Find the cosine of the angle between the vectors A is equal to 3i plus 2j and B is equal to 2i minus Yes, go ahead and try it so quick. A fraction with the numerator. Yes, a fraction put it down, do that. With numerator z zero. Uh, so like I'm zero. moving on. <laughs> 2i minus 2j. Yes, Bishop Herman. Yes. Yeah. Wisdom. We have what? 13 over root 13. That's incorrect. You have to ring for it. A fraction with numerator root 26 and denominator 26. Yes. Okay, answer. <laughs> you want to be like Nebuchadnezzar. You want to give the question and then interpret the question and answer it too. Right? Okay. Find the value of the infinite series. 10 plus 1. Yes, go ahead. A fraction. 
a fraction with numerator 10 and denominator 9. That seemed correct. Who else rang? 100 with a 9. Yes, you are right. <laughs> Consultants, your series is predictable. <laughs> All right. Last one for the round. Solve the radical equation. 2 plus square root of the expression 3x minus 2 is equal to x. Yes, wisdom. X is equal to four. No. Uh, prior so. Oh no, go ahead. X is equal to six or X is equal to one. No, in prior so. X is equal to six. Yes. Okay. So I know it's speed race. You're not supposed to be spending too much time, but you must still do your common sense checks. Huh? So if you look at it, you'll see that x is equal to 1 is not a root of the original equation if you check it. So the right answer is 6. And on that note, we've come to the end of the second round. worth 2,800 Ghana CDs. I know you'll all be working hard for that, right? Yes, good. So the problem of the day is a single question to all three schools. It's a more engaging question, so it will keep you for four minutes. At the end of the four minutes, you are to present your, so you are to present your solution for adjudication, right? So you present your answers on the uh, screens behind you and I will come around and check. Okay, please you may stand, drop your pens, and now let's turn over our sheets and read the problem of the day together. Problem of the day. A hydrated inorganic salt in the laboratory has lost its label. To identify the formula of the salt, a student measures 10.0 grams of the salt and heats it gently to dryness. At this point, the salt has lost 47.2% of its mass. In other experiments, the student determined the percentage composition of the elements present in the anhydrous salt as 11.1% aluminium, 9.50% sodium, 26.5% sulfur, and 52.9% oxygen. Ladies and gentlemen, please determine the empirical formula of the hydrated salt. This is your problem of the day. You may now begin. problem from chemistry, an interested one. So contestants were told that there is a hydrated inorganic salt in the lab and it does not have a label. This is a problem and since our science students are problem solvers, we expect them to be able to sol solve such a problem. So they are to identify the formula of the salt because all chemicals in the lab must be labeled. And the student now takes 10.0 grams of the salt heats it up gently until it's dry. What this means is that all the hydration, the water, is gone, right? That's what this means. And then, at this point, the salt has lost 47.2% of its mass, so this is associated with the hydration. Then there are other experiments that are done left to another day, but our science students can do these experiments. And so the student has determined that the composition of the salt 
is 11.1% aluminum, 9.5% sodium, 26.5% sulfur, and 52.9% oxygen. So if you have all of this information, you should be able to determine the formula of the hydrated salt. The challenge was the time. So you, if you have four minutes to do this, a good approach would be to first determine the empirical formula of the anhydrous salt. Huh? You see, we have a certain proverb in Akan that says, Yediehia. <laughs> so you do the first things first. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so then given the percentage loss of water, we can then determine the mass of the hydrated compound and hence its formula. Okay? So first thing is to start with the anhydrous salt. So you have sodium, aluminum, sulfur, and oxygen. You've been given the masses. You know atomic masses of all of these things. So you use that information, of course, right? So you divide the mass by the atomic mass for each of these. The values are given. You were not given atomic masses, but at this level, quarterfinals, you all know them. Uh -huh. So we have, uh, for sodium, you have 9.50 divided by 23 uh, to give you 0 0.413 moles of sodium. For aluminum, you have 11.1 divided by 27 to give you 0 0.411 moles of aluminum. For sulfur, you have 26.5 divided by 32 to give you 0 0.828 moles of sulfur. And then for oxygen, you have 52.9 divided by 16 to give you 3.31 moles. Now, you get the simplest fraction. Uh, the simplest ratios. So you take, you take the smallest one, the smallest number of moles is 0 0.411, divide all of them and get the simplest ratio. And you'll get one for sodium, one for aluminum, two for sulfur, and eight for oxygen. If you're able to get to this point, I'm giving one point for each of the corrected <laughs> simple ratios. Uh, so that gives you four points. So the empirical formula for the anhydrous salt is going to be NaAlS2O8. For collecting all the information in this manner, you get one more point. So at this point, five points. Now, you look at the empirical formula mass is 242 gram per mole. And so the mass of the hydrated salt, now we just basically are using our fractions, right? We know all the information we have now. So it's 242, which we just calculated, divided by, which we just mentioned, divided by 1 minus 0 0.472. That comes from the 47.2 percent, right? Okay, so that will give you 458 gram per mole of the hydrated salt as its mass. If you have this information, you can do a lot of things. So you now know the mass of the water of hydration is going to be the 458 minus 242 to give you 216 gram per mole. Now we know the molar mass of water, right? So if we want to know the number of molecules or the number of moles of water, we we'll take this 216 gram per mole, divide by 80, and we'll get 12. If you get this far, you get to the 12, you get four more points. And so now you know how much water there is, you know how much of the anhydrous material there is, the formula, you can put everything together. So you have Na, NaAlS2O8 dot, water of hydration now comes in 12H2O, and you get one more point to make five points for that part of it, making a total of 10 points. This was the suggested solution from the consultants. Now, what did our contestants do? Uh, Bishop Herman. Bishop Herman, you started, you did something, right? So you set up the equation. You actually, um, you, 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 did, you did try. You set up all four to get the number of moles of, for the anhydrous salt. However, you didn't conclude to the calculation of number of moles. Neither did you arrive at the ratios, the simplest ratios. For setting those equations up, I'm giving you one point. Then the rest of it 
eventually maybe you would have had something, but to be honest, in the time available, I doubt that you would, especially since you didn't have the anhydrous material, how would you ever arrive at this water? So I'm not giving anything else, okay? So that leaves you with one out of 10. Um, in prior so, in prior so you started, you also did something. I think all of you wanted to start with the water. I don't know why. Anyway, you did some calculations. You were working with two significant figures for the values of the number of moles. You were able to do a, the calculation for sodium, for sulfur, for aluminium. You didn't do anything for the oxygen. And so uh, the best that I can give you at this point will be, although it's, I would have liked the three significant figures, but I'll, I'll still give you three for uh, two significant figures for number of moles. The rest, I can't add anything else, right? So you wind up with three out of 10. Wesley girls also very interested in the water of hydration for some reason. So you started out with the water of hydration calculation, which will wind you in all kinds of troubles eventually if you don't know what the anhydrous thing is. Uh, you went ahead and you were doing your calculations to one significant figure only to be fast, but even then you couldn't uh, get all of them right. For, you had the wrong value for oxygen completely, right? Uh -huh. You are an order of magnitude off for the oxygen, so that would not even have given you the right anhydrous compound for you to do the calculation properly, okay? So um, I'm going to give you three points for the ones that you did. Sodium, aluminum, and sulfur. Oxygen, no. And then you would not have arrived at the water of hydration with your anhydrous then the way it was. So I'm not giving you anything else. So you also have three out of 10. Oh. The NSMQ star has gone waste. Uh, Prudential Life Insurance, can you give me the star? <laughs> anyway, so that's the end of the problem of the day and the end of round three. You're welcome, Patrick. Okay. Round four. In this round, I'm going to be presenting you with statements. When you receive a statement, please consider it carefully and let me know whether it's true or false. If you are right, two points. If you are incorrect, you lose a precious point. You may choose not to respond, in which case that statement is available to the two remaining schools. A school may ring and attempt an answer. If you're right, two four points. If not, there's a penalty, one point. If it's a regular statement, you'll have 10 seconds to respond. If their calculations are alert you, and you have 30 seconds to respond. Best wishes to all three schools. I'm starting with you, Bishop Herman. Your statement. Oscillations of an air column in a tube closed at one end and open at the other end, occur with a displacement anti-node at the closed end of the tube. Yes, Patrick? False. You are right. <laughs> In prior, so, 
the lowest frequency oscillation of a column of air in a tube closed at one end and open at the other end occurs with a wavelength approximately equal to four times the length of the tube. Clavet. False. No. That's a true statement. Wesley girls. Oscillations of an air column in a tube closed at one end and open at the other end occur with a pressure antinode at the open end of the tube. Nana? True. No, that's a false statement. Next set with a very short preamble. Preamble to all schools. For an obtuse angle A, as a preamble, Bishop Herman, cosine of A is positive. Patrick? False. Yes. <laughs> so sine of A is negative. Yes, False. go ahead. False. Yes. <laughs> Tangent of A is positive. Nana? False. Yes. <laughs> Next set, preamble to all schools. Preamble. <coughs> Excuse me. Did you get that? Great. Your statement, Bishop Herman. They assume a simple food chain and do not consider food webs. Patrick. False. No, that's a true statement. <laughs> In prior so with the same preamble, saprotrophs are not given any place. Have it. False. No, it's a true statement. With the same preamble, they do not take into account the same species belonging to two or more trophic levels. Zakia. True. Yes. <laughs> Herman, during sigma bond formation, p orbitals overlap head on to form strong bonds. Patrick? True. No. That's a false statement. Impriso. During hybridization in carbon, hybrid orbitals always have lower energy than the unhybridized orbitals from which they are formed. Yes. True. No. The lack of free rotation around carbon-carbon single bonds is due to the strong attraction of sigma bonds.
Na na. Chu. No. Next set, preamble to all schools, preamble. Consider the Bohr model of the hydrogen atom. That's your preamble. Bishop Herman. A transition from the level with principal quantum number five to the level with principal quantum number one is accompanied by the emission of four photons. Yes, Patrick? It's false. Yes. Right, so only transitions between adjacent levels are allowed. Yes, Clavet? Both. Yes. In a transition between any pair of levels, the energy of the photon involved in the transition equals the energy difference for the two levels. Yes, Zakia? True. Yes. <laughs> a function is not necessarily a mapping. Patrick? True. Oh, no. That's a false statement. A function is a relation. Yes, Clavet? True. Yes. <laughs> a relation is not necessarily a mapping. Nana? False. Ooh. <laughs> That's a true statement. Bishop Herman, apart from the conventional use, dialysis can also be used in acute poisoning. Patrick? True. Yes. Apart from the conventional use, dialysis can also be used in blood transfusions. Yes, love it. True. Oh, no. <laughs> Apart from the conventional use, Dialysis can also be used in treating low blood pressure. Zakia? False. False. Yes, it's false. <laughs> Last set of statements for the round. Cesium has the lowest first ionization energy compared with rubidium and barium. Yes, Patrick? True. Yes. <laughs> Magnesium has the smallest atomic radius compared with aluminium and scandium. Clavet? False. Yes. <laughs> Last statement of the round, Wesley girls. Sodium has the highest electron affinity compared with lithium and calcium. Nana? Sure. No. <laughs> That's a false statement. And that's the end of the fourth round. If 
you solve three riddles, you get 1,600 Ghana CDs. If you solve two of the riddles, you get 1,000 Ghana CDs. And if you solve even one, you get 500 Ghana CDs. I don't see how you can live with nothing, <laughs> honestly. Mm. So we are grateful to Goyle, good energy. All right. Obviously, we are going to be solving riddles in this round. I'll be reading out the clues. For an opportunity to solve a riddle, you must ring for it. May I hear your bell? Wesley Girl, thank you. Yours and prior soul. Thank you. And yours, Bishop Herman. Thank you. If you solve the riddle on the first clue, five points. On the second clue, four points. On the third or any clue thereafter, three points. When you ring, the answer must be snappy. I will not wait. There are four riddles. First one. I am a chemical element in the news lately. I have properties of metals and non-metals. I am largely produced as a byproduct of zinc production. I am currently the subject of an export ban from China, a country that accounts for about 60% of my supply. Yes. Silicon. No, that's incorrect. I am named after a country. Yes. Germanium. Yes. Yeah. They saw the riddle. On the fifth clue, three points. Next one. I am a model in botany. I was independently proposed by a Russian-born scientist of the University of Kiev, Ukraine, in 1927 and another scientist of the California Institute of Technology in 1928. Although I have been criticized and continue to be refined, I have largely stood the test of time. The basic elements of me are that oxen is the sole hormone that controls growth in gravitropism and phototropism. I owe my existence to Cholodny or Kolodny and Went, who independently. This is my yes. The Nana. acid growth theory. The acid growth theory. No. Who independently presented an elegant model of me. So who am I? Yes, Clavet. You are the Colossian model. Yes. <laughs> Next one. I am a physical quantity. I am closely associated with energy. Specifically, I am a derivative of energy that is taken subject to particular restrictions. Two systems are said to be in thermal equilibrium. Yes. Nana. It's energy. It's energy. Mm. Um, you are power. No. It's not a derivative. Did anyone else ring? Okay, so I continue. Two systems are said to be in thermal equilibrium if they have the same value of me. Yes, Clavis. Temperature. Yes. <laughs> they solved the riddle on the fourth clue, three points. Last one. Hmm. 
I am a square three digit number. My first digit is an unusual prime number. My second digit is a Q. Yes, Patrick. 289. You are right. They solved it on the third clue. Three points. Three points. Bishop Herman, that was quite something with the riddles. I, you wish there were more riddles, right? Uh, unfortunately, we must say goodbye for this year. Best wishes to both of you. Well done. In Price Senior High School, first time in the quarterfinals and doing so well. Well done. Unfortunately, we must say goodbye. Thank you so much for giving us such a great contest. Uh, all the best to you. Wesley Girls High School. <laughs> Congratulations on winning the contest. Congratulations. That was quite a scare, wasn't it? <laughs> anyway, you've done it. Um, if the score of yours stays the highest for the day, there is a highest scorer award, which at this stage is worth 3,000 Ghana CDs. And the highest scorer award is sponsored by 80. Life is simple. So we'll watch and see. But more interestingly, you have made it into the semi-finals. Congratulations again. I look forward to seeing you. All the best. Viewers. Thank you so much for joining us for this contest. It's been an exciting one. It's only the first of the quarterfinals. But before we go, let me acknowledge the sponsors. The National Science and Math Quiz is proudly sponsored by the Ghana Education Service in partnership with Gold PLC and supported by Joy News, AT, Prudential Life Insurance Ghana, Pepsodent Toothpaste, Better Malt, Ghanaian Academic and Research Network, Coronation Insurance, Accra College of Medicine, Academic City University College, Cowbell, Bell Beverages, GTP, Newmont Ghana, Africa World Airlines, and YFM. Please plan to be with us next time when we bring you another quarterfinal contest, this time featuring Osechi Chie Senior High School, Kumase High School, and Achimota School. Thank you so much for joining us this time. My name is Elsie Fakoffman, and see you next time. Bye.